This is a video for Math 123 Quantitative Reasoning. In this video, I will give a simple explanation of how to open your first Excel spreadsheet and use it to calculate things like average, median, mode, and quartiles. You may find it helpful to follow along with the in-class activity notes labeled Life Expectancy and Descriptive Statistics. You will find instructions on how to find mean, median, and mode using Excel on page four, and I will be using the examples out of these notes. So first, let's open Microsoft Excel. I'm using my home computer, so you may find things are in a different spot on your computer. I'll also be using Microsoft Excel 2007, but all of the commands are the same, and I will try to create a new video using the most updated version of Microsoft Office when I can. If I click on the computer start button and click on all programs, I'll look for the folder labeled Microsoft Office and open up Excel. If you're using Excel 2013, it won't automatically open a spreadsheet for you. You will need to open up a new spreadsheet and we just want a new blank spreadsheet with nothing special about it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a copy of the spreadsheet that is in the notes on page four. In this spreadsheet, we have a list of 10 exam scores. You might find it helpful to follow along on your own computer. If you want to pause this video while you open up Excel and create your own spreadsheet with these same scores in it. Okay, as I said, we want to find things like the average. So in cell D2, I'm going to type the word average. That doesn't actually do anything to find the average. This is just a label, and I'm going to find the average in the cell next to this. Let me go ahead and set up labels for all the things I want to find. Again, I'm just matching the spreadsheet that's in the notes. Okay, you'll notice the labels that I typed, some of them are going outside of the D column. Just like any Microsoft Office pro product, there's lots of things you can do to change the formatting. If I want to make it so that my words fit into this column, I can take my mouse and hold it up here between the D and the E column. Once I get the mouse cursor to look like this with two arrows, that's indicating that I can click and drag on the column and make it as large as I want. Another option would be to click on format and auto fit column widths so that whatever words I type always fit into my columns. Okay, let's get to the most important part of the lesson, how to make Excel calculate values for us. When I want Excel to do a calculation, I need to type an equals sign. So in cell E2, I type it equals. Notice that what I type also appears up here in this bar with the f of x function symbol next to it. Okay, I could simply use Excel as a calculator and type the scores by hand of actual numerical values, add them all up and divide by 10, just like we would find any average. But that is not what I want to do. I want to use the power of a spreadsheet. Of course, Excel has an average function built in. All I need to do is type the word average. You can see as I type, Excel pops up all the different functions it has that start with these letters. I just want a regular average, so I'm going to type the word average. You'll notice a box pops up and tells me what this function does. Of course, it computes an average, an arithmetic mean. Okay, I also need to make sure that I put a parenthesis here, and now I want to tell it what I want to find the average of. Here I want to use cell references. My first cell that I want to find is A2. When I type A2, it highlights that box to make sure that that is the cell that I want. Notice that I don't even have to type it as a capital A2. Now here, I could just make a list of all the things I want to find the average of, separating them by, by commas, but it's easier to use an array here. So if I type a colon and then type the last value in the array that I want to find the average of, it highlights, as you can see, all of my values in column A. Okay, now I can either close my parentheses or hit enter, and of course it calculates the average for me. Okay, let's try that again on a different value. Let's find the minimum. So in cell E3, again, make sure you type your equal sign. And no big surprise, to find a minimum, I type M-I-N. 
and Excel tells me this is going to return the smallest number in a set of values. I'm going to need to make sure I use a parenthesis. Now, to select my values, I could type A2 colon A11 again, or you can also use your mouse and you can highlight the values you want it to find the minimum of, whatever is easiest for you. When I hit enter, it tells me what the minimum value out of that list is. Let's find the first quartile. Remember, the quartile tells us where the one-fourth spot in our data is. That can be really hard to find by hand, and Excel has special functions that will find it for us. No big surprise, I type the word quartile, and I put a parenthesis. Okay, notice in the box, it tells me what values this function requires. It requires an array, and then it requires another value. I'm going to use the same A2 through A11 that I've been using. Okay, but I also have to tell it which quartile I'm looking for. So I put a comma. I want the first quartile here, so I simply type the number 1. And now it's found my first quartile for me. If I want to double check something and uh, look at what I've typed in the box, if I go back up to this box for first quartile, I can still see 70.75 on my screen, but up here in the function bar, it also tells me what was actually typed in that area. Okay, let's find the median. I'll type it equal, and no big surprise. To find a median, you type median. Okay, this time I think I'll use my mouse to highlight my data. Okay, let's find the third quartile. Again, I want to select the array or type A2 through A11 and then comma. This time we want the third quartile. We also have a function for maximum. It's max. Okay, when I get to range, let me show you what happens when we make a mistake in Excel. I type the word range and nothing comes up. Excel doesn't have a special function for range. We're going to have to figure out how to tell Excel how to calculate our range. When I try and type something in that Excel doesn't recognize, it gives me an error code like this. It's saying name. Are you trying to tell me about some cell that you've named range? So let me hit the delete button and try this again. Excel doesn't have a special function for range. I have to know what the definition of range is. The range would be the maximum value minus the minimum value. Okay, I already have cells where I've calculated the maximum value and the minimum value. So I'm going to type equals, and I'm going to use cell references. The maximum value is in cell E7. Again, notice Excel is very helpful and highlights that cell for me in case I misread it somehow. Then I'm going to type minus cell E2. And notice it highlights that in a different color that matches the color in the area I've typed. Very helpful. Now I know what my range is. And finally, we're asked to find the mode. The mode being the value that occurs most in my data. In this data, the value 87 occurs more than once. Okay, we could have found all of these values by hand pretty easily, so you may be wondering why use Excel at all. Well, the beauty of using a spreadsheet and using cell references is that when I change my data, it will recalculate all of these values. So if I come over to cell A2 and change this student's score from 87 to 100, look what happened in cell E2. It changed the average value automatically. I didn't have to redo the calculation all over again. Notice what happened in cell E9. Be now that there is no mode, there is no value that is happening more than once, it gives a NA symbol there. You'll also see this green area on the corner, that is Excel telling me, I think there may be a mistake here. And then it gives me options for what might be wrong with it. Sometimes there's nothing wrong with it. Excel is just trying to be too helpful. Uh, sometimes in a very complicated calculation, you can have it walk you through the steps to see if you can help Excel find the error. Okay, that's pretty much all you need to know for the formulas. I just want to talk for a moment about some more things you can do to format your spreadsheets to make them look nice. So first, let me give you a helpful hint. Let's say I want to undo the last thing that I typed and change my 100 score back to 87. Uh, you may have a shortcut button up here for undo. 
or you can also hit control Z and it will undo the last thing you typed. That can come in really handy when you mess something up in a spreadsheet. Okay, just like any Microsoft Office product, we can change the formatting. So maybe I want to make my labels bold so that they're easier to see. Maybe I want to highlight them in bright colors or even color code them. You can see the Excel spreadsheet has everything gridded out in gray. If I were to print this spreadsheet, that grid would not appear. If I want that grid to appear, I can change the formatting of the cells. So if I click in the format cells area, or you could also right click the cells after you highlight, you can add a border inside and outside if you want. I found that, find that I often want to do that when I'm printing things out in Excel. Uh, I also want to talk about how to format your numbers. I can come up here to the format area. Maybe I want my numbers to represent dollars or percents, or maybe I want to be more specific. So if I click on this arrow, it opens up all these choices for me. If I click on number, I can change how many decimal places there are. Maybe I only want to display one. Maybe I want to display two. Depends on what we're trying to show in our spreadsheet. Maybe we want more decimal places. Maybe we want less. So again, I encourage you to play with this and I will try to record more videos that are updated when I get a chance.